Hi guys! Please subscribe to this channel and like the video to support my project. Today we will talk about the alchemy and about the alchemist whose life is uh, surrounded in legends and in mysticism. We can find the name of this person in uh, many fiction books such as uh, books about Harry Potter of John Rowling or Da Vinci Code of Dan Brown and uh, Foucault Pendulum of Umberto Eco. It was a real person he lived in 14th century and his name was Nicolas Flamel. It was believed that uh, he uh, solved the secret of immortality and uh, became immortal himself. In the Vatican Library stored uh, curious materials on this topic, so let's try to figure it out. And before to start, I would like to say that uh, most of the information I will show in this video is a copyright of Vatican Library, and I would like to thank Vatican Library for the possibility to work with their collections. Historians still cannot answer exactly when and where Nicolas Flamel was born. There is not a single document left about this. There are only approximate information that he was born around 1330. Regarding the city where he was born, some sources say that it was Paris, others called La Croix de Maine, and the third ones called Pontoise. It is believed that the parents of Flamel uh, died uh, when he was young, and after their death, uh, Nicola moved uh, to Paris and became a public clerk. After marrying Pernel, a woman who was uh, twice a widow, Flamel rented uh, two workshops, one for himself and other for his copyist. Flamel was fled in a quiet and measured life in Paris, when one night he had a vision. In a dozen hollow to him appeared an angel, holding in his hand a manuscript, on the cover of which uh, were depicted strange symbols. The angel said to Flamel that uh, one day he will be able to see in this book what others do not able to see. Time passed, and then, one day in 1357, Flamel bought from a stranger an old manuscript decorated with strange figures. Uh, when he examined it, he recognized the book from his vision. Flamel himself described this book as follows. It was very old gilded manuscript. It was not written on paper or parchment, like others, but on the most tender bark of young trees. Its cover, made of thin copper foil, was engraved with foreign writing or symbols which I thought were the letters of Greek or some other ancient languages. Since I could not read them in any way, I was quite sure that uh, they were not Latin or Gaelish letters, because they were quite familiar to me. As for the content of the book, its uh, pages were filled with the Latin characters executed with the highest degree of skills and accuracy using a sharp metal pen and colored ink. The book contained three times seven pages, and each seven sheet was completely without text, and place of which was occurred uh, by the image of a road and uh, two intervening snakes on the first seven sheet. The image of the cross with the snake crucified on it on the second seven sheet. On the third and last was depicted a desert, in the middle of which beach fountains, and from them snakes crowd out in great numbers and scatter it around. On the title page of the book, in gilded capital letters was written, Abraham the Jew, prince, priest, uh, levity, astrologist and philosopher, welcomed the Jewish people, disparted by the wrath of God among the Gauls. Flamel wrote that whoever sold this book to him did not know its uh, true value, just as he did not know what he was buying. In the second page of this book, uh, the author placed uh, the words of uh, consolation uh, to his people, advising them to avoid all evils, especially idolatry, and also patiently and weakly await the coming of Messiah. 
starting from the third sheet onwards, uh, to help his people uh, pay tribute uh, to the Roman Empire, the outer touch in the simple words, uh, the transmutation of metals. On the margins uh, were placed images of vessels uh, that were painted in the appropriate colors, as well as much more, everything with the exception of the source material, about which he did not say a word, but uh, only on the fourth and fifth sheet he depicted it and painted it. According to the legend, in this book was revealed the secret of the Philosopher's Stone. In the Middle Ages, alchemists believed that exists a Philosopher's Stone, an unknown substance also called the tincture or uh, the powder, that can transform base metals into precious ones, especially gold and silver, and also from it could be derived an elixir of life. The Philosopher's Stone was sought to cure illnesses, prolong life, and bring about spiritual revitalization. But let's back to the mysterious book. Flamel was determined to understand it. He had the knowledge of alchemy, so he could understand most of the operation described. But uh, he lacked uh, the knowledge uh, to be able to complete the transmutation of metals. His wife also tried to help him. She was uh, 20 years older than him and also interested in alchemy. Flamel also showed the figures from the book to many wise uh, people in Paris, but uh, without result. After 20 years, he decided to travel to Spain, where he hoped to find a Jewish sage who could help him solving the book enigmas. At that time, uh, Jeffs uh, had been driving out of France and uh, many had moved uh, to Spain, where they were tolerated uh, by the Moorish kings. In the books uh, from the Vatican Library that are used uh, to prepare this material, there is also a legend about this city, Santiago de Compostela. Theodomirus, uh, Bishop of Iria, received a word from a mountaineer that uh, on a wooden hill some distance west of Mount Pedroso, at night uh, could be seen a soft, lightly bluish light. And uh, when the sky was cloudless, uh, could also be seen a star that uh, shone brightly over the same place. On the hill were carried out uh, excavations and uh, was found a perfectly preserved body in a marble coffin, which, uh, according to some signs, belonged uh, to the Apostle uh, St. James. In uh, that site was built a chapel. Pilgrims began uh, to flock there. Around the chapel were built houses, and soon the chapel was transformed into a cathedral. The bishop uh, moved uh, his residence to a new city called uh, San Tiago, San Jacques, or Compostela, Stello Campus Star Filed. Flamel went uh, to the city as a pilgrim. He was allowed accompanied by other pilgrims uh, to venerate uh, the mantle of St. James. And after distributing arms and uh, praying, he continued his journey. He was returning by the same route when in Lyon he met a French merchant uh, from Boulogne, who introduced him to a Jewish doctor named Master Conscious, who was then living in Leon. He was a Jewish convert to Christianity, well-educated person and very good in the science. When uh, Flamel showed him copies of some pages, uh, Master Conscious changed his face. He said uh, that these figures are taken from uh, the Rabbi Abraham book. Uh, which uh, the Kabbalist considered lost forever. Here, the Master Conscious and Flamel are already great friends. One has found a manuscript that uh, they considered lost. The other wants uh, to read the symbols. When uh, Flamel said that uh, he had the original, but uh, he would show it on the condition that everything uh, be deciphered to him, Master Conscious decided to go with Flamel and see the manuscript. 
They both went to Paris. But、uh, when they arrived in Orleans, Conscience became very ill and soon died. Flamel said that、uh, by the death of、uh, his companion, returned to Paris alone. Now he knew much more to decipher the manuscript. And although some details were still unknown to him, with what he already knew, he could act. In Paris, Flamel returned to work. It took him at least three more years to finally achieve the desired goal. Flamel heated some material on a glass mattress or philosopher egg, enclosed in a special oven called adhanor. Matter、uh, then passed through a series of colors and modifications, the sequence of which, in a certain plant order, indicated、uh, to the alchemist that he is on the right path. So Flamel、uh, saw his material turn gray and then black. This、uh, black color philosophers called the crow's head. This is the key to the first great work of primary colors. And then a white circle surrounded the blackness like a halo. White threads radiated from the circle towards the center, intruding into the mass until all traces of black disappeared. In this state of perfect whiteness, the material is called small stone or white elixir, and it turns metals into silver. Since the appearance of this color, Flamel opened the philosopher egg and tried his elixir. Then,、uh, confident that he was on the right track, he took、uh, what was left of his white elixir and placed it back into the philosopher egg to refine it and obtain the great stone or red elixir, the true philosopher stone, the one that manifests metals to gold. For this, the material had to go through the colors of the rainbow with the use of hot mercury. Flamel described that the experience was successful and he was able to get gold, and that gold was even better than the usual one. It was softer and more flexible. It is difficult to tell from this description what kind of substance Flamel actually received, but apparently after that his name began to acquire riddles and legends. Flamel's alchemical manuscript、uh, preserved in the Vatican Library. It、uh, describes the alchemical canons in Latin. There is also a brief description of some alchemical works. Take a look at this sheet, for example. At the top is、uh, written in Latin "Aegidis Dividis," dialogue between、uh, nature and the son of philosophy. This little treatise, attributed to Aegidis Dividis, was、uh, published in、uh, Frankfurt in、uh, 1595 by the alchemist、uh, Bernard Gabriel、uh, Penaud de Port. This is、uh, approximately what is written in Latin in、uh, this papyrus sheet. But、uh, without a year of signification, year of publication of this work, I have found in other sources. And、uh, below is drawn the alchemical symbol of、uh, the philosopher's stone. But what is interesting, this text could not belong to Flamel, unless, of course,、uh, he really invented the secret of eternal life. Flamel, according to historians, died in fourteen、uh, eighteen. And、uh, Bernard Gabriel Prino published、uh, work of、uh, Devadis in the 1595. Another interesting document written on papyrus. Text is difficult to read. With the time, it became fade. Previous page also shows road. Page depicts alchemical symbols. The symbolism was often used by alchemists. In the left corner, we can see a signature: Nicola Flamel and Pernella, and also in the right corner, Nicola Flamel, Natario, fourteen zero seven. Flamel did not seek wealth. He was a scientist, and he was more interested in science. Nevertheless, he bought several houses in Paris. He helped the poor, and in one of his houses, he set up a boarding house for the homeless, who had to pray twice a day as payment for living.
This house is still preserved in Paris and uh, is considered as the oldest building and is uh, located on uh, Montmorency Street. This building now houses a restaurant. According to historians, Flamel died in 1418, having outlived his wife uh, by more than 10 years. However, a rumor spread throughout Europe that Flamel and his wife had not died. With the help of the philosopher Stone, they gained eternal life and staged their death. They were allegedly seen at the Paris Opera 300 years after Flamel's supposed death. It was said that uh, Flamel then left Europe and uh, hit the mysterious Shampala. A certain man named uh, Paul Luca met in Turkey a man who knew Flamel very well. According to his story, he lived in India for a long time, uh, where he met a famous alchemist and uh, his wife and son, already born in India. According to this report, uh, Flamel and his wife, uh, thanks to the philosopher Stone, gained eternal youth. Fearing that this discovery could uh, become very dangerous for them, they staged uh, their death and uh, first uh, fled to Switzerland and later crossed over India. In the 18th century, Flamel allegedly visited uh, the French ambassador in Turkey. This happened almost four centuries after his death. An amazing fact, two centuries after the death of uh, Flamel, his grave was opened, but it turned out to be empty. No matter what uh, legends or historians say, Nicolas Flamel uh, still has queried uh, immortality. At least his name became immortal. It continues to live in uh, fiction and scientific books and also in legends of immortality. That's all for today. I thank you for your attention. Please uh, subscribe to the channel and like the video. And see you soon in my new videos. Bye-bye.